Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Rob's Rides with Rob, keeping it 100 with all things amusement. And if you're watching this, you're starting school back up. So I know what you guys are all thinking. How do you not make a video in two weeks and still look like shit? It's been a very busy two weeks. Back at it. So today I'm going to talk about the top 10 rides at Six Flags New England. Disclaimer, based off of my experience, it's the likelihood of if I would ride the ride again. And this includes both roller coasters and any other attraction at the park. So let's get started. For an honorable mention, Thunderbolt. I did not get a chance to ride it. I'm sure it's somewhat thrilling, um, but I'm pretty sure it, it may not have made the cut anyway, um, but it's old, so it doesn't have to be fun. Kind of like museums. Flashback, I also didn't ride. I'm sure it would be number one. Scream Tower, this probably would have placed, but I'm sure it's nothing to jump up and down about. No pun intended. Goliath, I actually did put on this list, even though I didn't write it. And hopefully I did not put it in the wrong place. Dishonorable mention, Gotham City, Gauntlet, Arkham Asylum, Escapees. Escape from Arkham Asylum, there you go. Yeah, it's this ride it hurt. This is not top 10. This is awful. Number 10, Houdini, The Great Escape. This ride wasn't really thrilling, but it was cool. It was practical visual illusions while sitting on a church pew. Came off that ride screaming, hallelujah! And that ride went on pretty long. I thought that I would get off that ride like ASAP, but I was on those church pews, Marvin sat. That's because the ride length was large. Number nine, Mine Eraser. Good old SLC. It was thrilling. Painfully thrilling, actually. It was like being the booger stuff on somebody's hand and they're trying to flick it off. You're going through all these loops and you realize it's not a shoulder harness. This is a shoulder harness. It had its moments, though. It had its moments, but damn sure it had a line. Pandemonium. This is only placed here because it had some sort of thrill, but it wasn't painful. Paint scheme looked like airheads on crack. It really should have been more thrilling than it was. I rode Spinning Dragons at Worlds of Fun and that was a really fun ride. And I don't know what was wrong with this. I only spent like two and a half times. Number seven, New England Sky Screamer. This should have been less thrilling than it actually was. This ride was tall. I mean, Starbucks small tall. I believe it's the highest of its kind, about 400 feet. It provided an amazing breeze, and you literally went over the Wicked Cyclone and the Surf's Up themed water ride. Number six, Fireball. I really wish they were talking about the liquor. Who doesn't love a Larson Looper? There is no end or beginning to this ride. Literally like riding an Applejack. This, this ride isn't bad. It's fun when you have the hang time, and they allow you to ride for a pretty long time. Much longer than I would last in bed. Number five, Blizzard River. Now, how the hell did a Whitewater Rapids ride make it to number five? This ride was cool, and so far, it's my favorite Rapids ride. I still haven't rode, like, the Universal one and stuff like that, but this one was really fun. It had a lot of mist and fog. It was blinding. It had, like, surprise shooters and waterfalls. It kind of sounds like a bar. You will enjoy yourself, unless this is open in October, and that case, you will get hypothermia. Number four, Goliath. Now, I did not write this, so coaster enthusiasts and fans of Six Flags New England, please don't just attack me, but I felt like appropriately this ride would reach the number four spot just because it's a really big, really tall, 90 degree drops. Um, and I rode in Vertigo slash Face Off at King's Island multiple times, which is a, another inverted boomerang, but on a smaller scale. And I think that's an enjoyable attraction. So I'm pretty sure that the Goliath would be enjoyable. But just let me know if the Goliath actually deserves to be number 15. Man, only if this didn't have broke cable. We could get HBO. We get to flip upside down, not three, but six times. And with those inversions, it's two of the most rare and comfortable inversions out there. A vertical loop and a cobra row. Number three, Batman, The Dark Knight. 
everything about this ride was pleasant. Well, except maybe the entrance. Uh, I don't know if it was because I was going there sunset time when the water park was closing. It's next to the water park. It was, a, it was just a really crowded area. It was kind of dead end for the drive park section. What I loved about it is that it had the old school B&M intensity, but still some of the floater grace of today's B&M. And it wasn't in Gotham City. Who knew that Batman lived on the South End? South Side, born and raised. Number two, Superman the Ride. Now, this ride and the number one spot, I'm having a hard time debating which should be number one, but I have to ride it again because last time the VR had me riding like a Cyclops. This ride was very fun and it had everything that Millennium Force was missing. No wonder Bizarro started stealing all of Millennium Force's shine. And now they repainted them to those basic primary colors that you learn about in first grade art class. They stuck those distorting binoculars on your face to make sure the line is longer than that unbearable Batman versus Superman. Now you definitely be in that line, Marvin Sapp. That's like the whole damn Black Baptist Church. So if you don't know about that, Black Baptist churches last, you know, on average five hours, two hours on Super Bowl Sunday, maybe 10 on Christmas. It had airtime, it had um, overbank turns, bunny hops, tunnels, everything except quick ejector airtime and ridiculous insanity. Number one, Wicked Cyclone. I don't know if this was a roller coaster or a car accident. Either way, I'm totaled. Not the fastest, not the highest, but the drunkest. This has a severe steep drop, tons of overbank turns, bunny hops, barrel rolls, and things I'm sure they have no name for. This park really has a great lineup. You definitely have a great time there, regardless of how terrible the operations are, because um, they do get pretty bad. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked my video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. Please share if you thought I was Canada Coaster fan, hit subscribe, and I'll come out with a new video sooner or later.